Hi, my name is Anand and in this video we shall look into the transform component in Unity. We shall firstly look into the component itself, then we shall dive into the code and look into its properties and then discuss some functions that are frequently used. There is a lot to cover so this is going to be a lengthy video. You can use the timestamps below to quickly move across in the video. Okay, what is transform? A transform is simply the position, the rotation and the scale of an object. Essentially, the class transform inherits directly from the class component. Just like rigid body, they do not inherit from behavior, which is a child class of component. Therefore, it cannot be enabled and disabled in the inspector. And logically speaking, it is not something that you would want to disable, right? Now let's take a look inside the editor. You can see that every game object will contain a transform. And instantiating a transform via code creates a game object as well. Now we can change the position, rotation and scale of a game object by changing these values in the inspector. You can also use the transform tools provided by Unity and use these gimbals to change values as well. You can use the keyboard shortcuts of Q for selection tool, W for move tool, E for rotation tool and R for scale tool. You can also use T for direct tool which is great especially for 2D games. This tool allows you to perform all the three transform operations at the same time and is super flexible. You can move objects by simply clicking and dragging. You can rotate by dragging over the corners and you can scale by dragging the borders. Very cool. A thing to mention is that these values are relative to the parent transform of the selected game object. Yes, you can create a hierarchy of transforms and develop a parent-child relationship with one another. All you have to do is just drag and drop a game object onto another to make it a child of the other. So if you try to make a game object a child of another, you may see this position change. For game objects that have no parent, these values will be global. We'll discuss more about parenting later in the video. You can see that each one of these values is represented on three axes. If you use the transform tools, you can also see these axes here as well. Red represents the X axis, green represents the Y axis and blue represents the Z axis. You can reference this gimbal over here to figure out the global X, Y and Z axis. Also once you rotate an object, the transform tools may be aligned differently from the global axis. This is what makes the transform tools so useful because this takes the object's orientation into account. If you want to make transform adjustments with respect to the global axis, you can click on this small button here. Currently it is set to local axis. If you click it, you can change it to the global. Now let's look into these values individually. Position is a vector 3, which shows the local position vector of a game object with respect to its parent. What I mean is, it just shows you the location of the game object, but in relative space to its parent. For example, if you have a game object on 100 zero zero and another one on minus 300, zero zero, if you make the second game object the child of the first one, you can see that the position changes to minus 400. Zero zero. This is the position of the game object with respect to the parent. So if you add this local position to the position of the parent, you'll get its global position. Nice. Rotation can be a bit confusing. In the inspector, it is shown in degrees, whereas in code, rotation can be calculated in a lot of ways. Quaternions, Eulers, Radians, and degrees. But the property rotation in the code stores a quaternion. This is because it's easier to perform rotational calculations with quaternions and is way more faster and also prevents a phenomenon called the gimbal lock. Scale is a vector 3 which decides how big a game object is. This is really important. We need to make sure to keep the scale as uniform as possible. We should also try to not make any values zero for the scale. Having a non-uniform scale skews the existing shape. This is not good. Also, non-uniform scales do not affect components with a radius property like a sphere collider or a capsule collider or a light. It is also important to understand how scale of the transform affects a mesh in unity. By default, one unit in world space equals one meter in length. So size of a mesh in unity will be the vector product of the transform scale 
with the imported mesh dimensions. So I always recommend to keep this 111 so it is consistent. If you want to scale an object in the game, I recommend scaling it in your 3D software, applying those changes and then re-importing it into Unity again. Also, we can reset these values by clicking on the three dots here and then hit reset. We can also copy and paste component values to another game object from here as well. Now let's talk a bit on parenting. Parenting, in my own words, is done to ensure that the child game object mimics the actions of the parent game object with respect to their relative space. Just like how our arms move whenever our body moves, our arms are basically parented to the body. Similarly, our hands are parented to our arms. Mimicking the position and scale is fairly straightforward. But child game objects rotate around the parent instead of rotating on its own axis. This makes parenting a crucial concept in animation and is something that every developer should know about. Now let's talk a bit about directions. And a direction can be considered as a vector from the current position and points towards a target position. A direction can be calculated as the normalized vector of the offset between the two positions. But the thing about directions, they actually have no origin. To make it clear, let's take an object at a specific position in the world. There exists an infinite number of directions in which this object can now travel. But none of these directions or vectors have an origin or a destination. If you take a specific direction, you can always represent a vector that is parallel to the direction and it will basically do the same thing, even though the values are different. Let's now see how the concept of directions can be used in movement, just to get a solid idea of things. It is common knowledge that velocity equals displacement over time. And displacement is the shortest distance between two positions which is going to be this offset value that we talked about. And now, this displacement is going to be velocity multiplied by time. And the velocity is a vector, and the magnitude of that vector is the speed of the body. So we can say displacement is going to be speed multiplied by direction multiplied by time. This is so useful in movement. For example, while moving, we displace our body by a little amount. That's what movement is. So instead of using displacement, we can say inside update position plus equals speed, which can be serialized at the top, multiplied by direction, which can be our input vector, multiplied by time. And since we are inside update, the time taken between each frame is going to be time dot delta time. This is basic translation. And just to make sure no errors come in, we can normalize this direction vector if we want to. Now let's look into some properties in the code. So any script that inherits from mono behavior can access a property called transform. This is just a quick way of accessing the transform component of the game object in which it is attached to. And this enables us to read or modify the properties of the transform. Let's start with transform.position. This obviously returns a vector3, which will be the global position of the game object. Since this is a vector3, we can further access the individual properties of it, like transform.position.x. We can read this value to perform various operations, but notice we cannot change it. This is because the x property is read-only, which means we cannot modify it. If we want to change this, we would have to modify the entire vector3. We also have transform.rotation, which returns a quaternion. And honestly, even after five years of experience making games, I still prefer looking into the forums and copying code rather than doing it myself. Like I said earlier in the video, operations using quaternions is way more faster for the computer and logical for those who knows how it works. But I think I'll never understand how it works. Transform.localScale is what we may use for the scale. It returns a vector. There's also a property called Transform.LowCScale which would give the global scale, but you mostly don't have to use that because global scale is often skewed for game objects with children that are rotated. And Unity says that it's inconvenient to represent a scale as a vector three and a three by three matrix must have to be used, but it will be taxing. So we should use local scale and it will give the result that we want. 
just like local scale we have local position and local rotation and they return the local counterparts of the respective global properties we can also access the parent transform using the property transform.parent we can also get the child count and we can use it to iterate through the children speaking of iteration transforms support enumerators which means you can loop through the children of a transform just from the parent using a for each loop like this for each transform child in transform and then you can perform transform operations on the child next up let's look at some direction vectors we have transform dot right which points towards the local x axis transform dot up which points towards the local y axis and transform dot forward which points towards the local z axis all three of these takes the game object's rotation into account if you don't want the rotation to be taken into account you can use the vector3 equivalence instead because the required axis will be the same as the global axis also a simple way to check if the object is being transformed is to use the has changed flag it's quite under the radar but it's a fast way to check if there were any changes to an object's transform just note that this flag exists for our convenience so you would manually have to set it back to false so that you can use this flag again to detect changes in the transform cool now let's look at some of the useful public methods inside transform let's first look at transform.translate method this method allows you to move the body along a translation translation here is basically a vector and the translation here by default calculates things relative to the transform's local axis which means if you want to move right on the local axis you shouldn't pass in the argument of transform.right instead you should pass in vector3.right and then the final direction will be calculated internally if you did pass in transform.right it may produce a different direction if you want to move in the global coordinates you can add a second argument which specifies the space in which the calculations are made by default it will be space.self which will calculate things relative to the transform's local axis to calculate things in global coordinates you may use space.world you may also pass in three floats instead of a vector as well now this method is ideally to be used inside update it also makes sense to multiply this vector with a float speed and time dot delta time just to keep the speed consistent in different target hardware now let's learn how to move the player with the simple method first we cache the speed then we get an input vector and it is going to be a new vector3 input dot get axis horizontal 0f input dot get axis vertical now let's move the body inside update by calling transform dot translate and we will pass in the input vector multiplied by the speed multiplied by time dot delta time in the editor let's set this to a high value and hit play and now you have very basic movement yay the second method for today is transform dot rotate this takes in a vector 3 for the euler angles don't worry euler angles which i don't know how to properly pronounce euler is basically a rotation to be added in degrees rotate does not take a quarter in which make things a lot easy for us in this method there exists another useful method called transform dot look at this takes in a transform or a vector 3 as the target this method rotates the game object so that the forward vector or the local z axis of the game object points towards the position of the target transform or the global coordinates of the vector 3 argument this can be really useful if you want a game object let's say an enemy always look at the player's position this also takes in a second argument which is a vector 3 for the world up direction to replicate the same effect in 2d you could take advantage of the second argument but then you may have to rotate the individual sprites in the prefabs as well instead i would recommend an approach to look at using quaternions which i'll be honest i have no idea what the heck is happening i always look into unity answers when it comes to doing rotation because i find quaternions too complex for my brain to handle at the moment and guys you don't have to learn each and everything in this video by heart my job here is to just introduce things to you and explain it to the best of my ability it's okay to forget things just google things out when in doubt let's look at a few more methods for a transform transform.transform point 
This takes in a vector 3 for a position. According to Unity Docs, this method transforms the position from local space to world space. In simple words, this function just returns a vector which adds the position vector to the game object's current world position. Fundamentally, it returns transform.position plus position. This can be useful to, let's say, instantiate a projectile from an offset so that it appears to spawn from the correct position. Transform.inverse transform point also takes in a vector 3 for a position. It transforms the position from world space to local space. And this is basically the difference of the two vectors. It returns the same value as position minus transform.position. This is useful to easily find the offset between two vectors. Transform dot transform direction. This takes in a vector 3 for a direction. This transforms a direction from local space to world space. I know this can be a bit confusing. Let's take our time with this. Okay, we know vector 3 dot up is normally used as direction, right? We can use it to move a body upwards. We may note that the local and the global up axis match, but we can also pass in the same vector 3 dot up as a position as well because both positions and directions are vectors. Now, let's say our body is rotated. Now, if you want to move our body upwards in its local axis, we can no longer use vector 3 dot up. Since we know for sure we want to go up, we can specify a global direction vector 3 dot up in our method here. And then this converts that into a local up direction so that it is aligned to the local axis of the transform. For simplicity, transform dot transform direction vector 3 dot up is the same as transform dot up. So we can specify any global direction that we like and then we get the local one in return. For curious minds, what this does is it rotates the direction vector based on the current rotation. And this might be confusing, but rotating a vector along a particular rotation is actually done by multiplication. I don't know why that is, but it is what it is. Therefore, this method returns transform.rotation multiplied by vector. This method is going to be useful for certain types of movement with rotation because the input vector is actually a global vector and then we can convert it into local vectors with this method. This method is also useful while specifying direction for ray casts and stuff. And finally, transform.inverse transform direction, which also takes in a vector 3 for a direction. And it transforms a direction from world space to local space. This actually inverses the rotation and then rotates the vector. Therefore, it returns the same value as quaternion.inverse transform.rotation multiplied by vector. I'll be honest, I have never used this function in my five years of experience making games. But I think this may be useful when you're making a HUD or a radar or something. I'm not sure, but let me know in the comments below if you know some use cases of this function. Thanks. All right, that's it for this video. Transform is quite a basic fundamental class in Unity, and it is important to know all the basic operations, or at least get the idea of it, so that you can Google it later. So if you have any doubts, talk to me in my Discord server. Link is in the description. Also, if you have any suggestions on what component I should cover next, let me know below. So take care. See ya. Bye-bye.